Hi, this is E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds in Urology. Joining me is Dr. Peter Carroll from the University of California, San Francisco. Peter's been with us at Grand Rounds a number of times in the past few years, and today we're going to talk about some new imaging that Peter's involved in, and it's a PSMA PET imaging. Uh, and I think about my career in urology, I go back a number of years when our imaging for prostate cancer was plain films and we were looking for blastic metastases. Along came the uh, technetium bone scans and uh, that was a step forward. And PET scanning was very important, a lot of malignancies, but somehow circumvented prostate cancer for a number of reasons. And only recently we've had a couple of them approved uh, and around the PSMA, scanning. Peter is uh, working on a new scan that was uh, just uh, uh, submitted to the FDA and, uh, and uh, that should be out uh, sometime in uh, late spring or summer. So Peter, can you tell us about it and what the advantages are and how you think it's going to fit into our practice? Thanks for coming. Well, David, thank you very much. And I agree with you that uh, we've seen a remarkable evolution in imaging of the prostate you know, uh, uh, endorectal, then surface coil MRI, targeted biopsy, and now uh, PSMA PET imaging. Uh, to me, it's really been a game changer. I think we've really understood a lot more about prostate cancer biology and natural history with the introduction of PSMA PET. Uh, so there's probably six different uh, PSMA PET uh, uh, products currently. The one that's been FDA approved is a gallium PSMA PET. The one that's been uh, really tested around the world and we have the most experience with. Uh, uh, second one that you've mentioned as coming to the FDA is a PY, uh, PYL, PSMA PET. Both are designed in two sets of patients and have been, have been FDA approved in two sets of patients, different than Aximum. So PSMA PETs have been approved at UCSF and UCLA for the use of uh, imaging in men with high-risk disease before treatment, before radiation or surgery, and then has also been approved to image those who have a rising PSA after uh, surgery or radiation. And we've had considerable insight in, in both groups of patients. Um, I think before, uh, when you look at it before initial therapy, think of a sensitivity of around uh, 40, 45% is superior than standard imaging with CT or bone scan. Importantly, the specificity is quite high. So if you see a, a, a big uptake in a node, you can be pretty confident it's a true positive. Uh, it also plays a remarkable role in men who have failed uh, either surgery or radiation therapy. And uh, in, in my opinion, that's where I've seen a real remarkable uh, spectrum of disease. At UCSF, when we've used it in men after surgery, we actually see that prostate bed recurrence is relatively uncommon, only about 15% of patients. The most common areas we see are in regional lymph nodes, sometimes retroperitoneal lymph nodes, unlikely distant metastases, but we see that in about 20% of patients. Importantly, when you use PSMA PET testing, you will change your treatment plan either before surgery and importantly, after surgery or radiation for those who fail biochemically. So about 30 to 40% of these lymph nodes are outside the standard radiation fields for either surgery or radiation therapy. So you, you, you modify your approach based on that. The PYL, uh, PYL antibody uh, it performs in a similar fashion as it has been tested again in high-risk patients before treatment and in patients who failed surgery and radiation therapy, and it appears to perform uh, relatively similarly. There's been only, think, to my knowledge, only one head-to-head -head trial, so we really don't know which one of these has a, a bigger advantage over another. However, the PYL antibody may have a bit, bit better resolution and has a longer half-life. So it may be that with a PYL uh, uh, product, it'll allow for a kind of centralized distribution. You may not need a generator on site to, to use it. So there may be some specific advantages to PYL antibody uh, compared to gallium 68. Great. So um, this is uh, this, uh, a question. So what happens if um, two years after a radical prostatectomy, somebody's PSA is going up? And it, uh, is, there a, is there a low cutoff that you have above which the, the test works better? So is it like one or 0.4 or what? Is there a difference between the, these tests? 
there, there is, a, well, I don't know if there's a difference between tests, but in general, we look for a cut point of around, uh, uh, you know, 0.15 or higher. At very low PSAs, you're unlikely to see anything. So obviously the higher the PSA, the higher the sensitivity. But I, I think of a cut point of about 0 0.15, 0 0.2, you'll get a reasonable sensitivity of around 40 to 50%. You know, what I tell urologists is, you can make a decision about the use of radiation therapy based on the initial pathology report, margins, uh, time to PSA recurrence and PSA velocity. So you may not need PSMA PET if you have a patient who has a high likelihood of responding to uh, salvage radiation therapy, but many people have a very low uh, response rate. So again, think of the T3A patient, margin negative, high grade tumor. These are the patients where in my mind, the imaging may play a more important role because it allows you to identify disease which you could you could miss otherwise. So I, I, I don't I don't reach to salvage radiation therapy right off the bat. I look at the patient, the pathology, margin rate, time to recurrence, and PSA kinetics, and then decide whether I think they're candidate for salvage radiation therapy without imaging, or in fact uh, let that PSA rise a little bit and then get the PSMA pet. So Peter, it seems like uh, most of these tests uh, tend to sort of focus on the pelvic area and around the prostate for uh, persistence or local recurrence. Um, are they of any value in looking at distant bone and might they be something that would uh, replace the technetium bone scans in the future? I think without question. I think we're gonna stop using technetium bone scans. We will be going right to PSMA uh, pad. We won't be doing choline, we won't be doing uh, uh, Axman PET uh, will be doing PSMA PET and it'll replace these other tests, which are, are generally a, a, a waste of money. So it, it, there's a difference where these things are excreted. Uh, does that interfere with your being able to image, uh, particularly around the prostate and after a radical in the anastomotic area? Correct. So it, 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 the, the, they are excreted in the urine. So in this regard, PYL may have a little bit more of an advantage over PSMA. And obviously, Axum and PET may have an advantage over both of those for uh, imaging the prostate. We always combine PSMA PET with some form of imaging of the prostate bed with a BMRI or UCSF ultrasound actually performs uh, very well as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll combine uh, techniques. But you know, if you look at the disease stated, the, uh, you know, when you operated margin rate, you can get a pretty good idea where you think these cancers are recurring. Now, so, I will say that so, remarkable, I mean, we have seen metastases in areas we did not think were relatively common, but the supraclavicular lymph nodes, the mediastinal nodes, and now the, the, what, what PSMA PET has allowed us is to really define the oligometastatic state to a degree that we just really weren't able to do so before. So, I, I, you know, we, you know, I, I grew up in urology thinking that either you had localized disease or metastatic disease. Right. But now I think the immediate uh, stage of people who have regional disease, not metastases, and some people who have oligometastases, who are treating those oligometastases may allow you to avoid hormonal therapy at least for several months. And I think I've seen some patients where you've targeted the, you know, the single met uh, and they've had remarkable responses. That which uh, brings up the next question I want to ask. I have two more. Um, one is uh, for these things to be valuable, I think that the information you get needs to be actionable uh, and that it, it is going to make a difference. You're going to do something. You're not just doing the test. Uh, of course, unless it's negative. But so you find a, um, so you find a, a, let's, and I actually had a case like this. Uh, uh, a, a lymph node was found uh, sort of pararectally, mesorectally, they called it. And um, is that something you go in and take out or you radiate it? How do you manage, how do you manage what you find in, you know, in and around the prostate and the pelvis? So a great question. And, you know, pararectal lymph nodes are not uncommon. Uh, and we see those. So I, I think a, a couple of things. Uh, I, I think there's no question it changes your approach, whether you change your lymph node dissection or change your radiation fields. We change your radiation fields actually quite commonly based on PSMA PET. I think that 
the, the, the real question is, does, did it make a difference? So I can tell you that you, we change our approach, but what we don't yet, does it, know, does it have an impact on prostate cancer specific survival or overall survival? That's, that's unknown. Whether you operate or radiate is still unknown. I, in my practice, for those people who failed regionally in lymph nodes after surgery, we've tended to use more radiation uh, and then consider surgery than upfront surgery, but we've done it both ways. The one uh, patient that, I was going to say the one patient I had, and this was about with a, it was with an oxygen scan about three or four years ago. We treated him with uh, focal radiation chemotherapy, and unbelievable, he still has an undetectable PSA. What about the the last question I want to ask, and, and I saw this happen a couple of times too, or finding other cancers um, that are not prostate cancer, like rectal cancers and uh, lymphomas, things like that. The DNA, what, what's your feeling about that? Is that pretty uncommon or is it common? No, it, it's been uncommon in my experience, but actually PSMA PET uptake has been seen in hepatocellular, kidney cancers, thyroid cancers. So it, it does allow you to image other things. So I haven't had a patient where we've seen a second malignancy, but, but it, it clearly is uh, taken up elsewhere. And of course it's taken up in benign tissues as well. As you mentioned, excreted in the kidneys, liver, spleen, parotid gland. Um, so it is picked up in uh, other areas. Uh, as a, a, the, the other thing to mention is that this is for imaging the two other parts of PSMA PET, which we need to keep an eye on. One is theranostics, you know, treatment, you know, right. the one and that's going to evolve rapidly. And as I was mentioning earlier to you before we got on the air, we're looking at a phase one trial. We are doing a phase one trial of intraoperative PSMA PET imaging using a PSMA PET fluorophore we're, we're uh, done our first cohort. I can tell you that the results are very interesting. This is a, this will be well adapted to the uh, Firefly, advanced Firefly camera on the robot. So I think that's another area for us to look at. You know, I think we've been unable to show the therapeutic value of lymphadenectomy because we didn't know which lymph nodes that were remove. You know, we, we, we was, you know testable hypothesis, but it mm -hmm. may be that intraoperative PET imaging will allow us to excise the prostate better with less morbidity and perhaps better remove regional uh, uh, disease. That's uh, this this whole this whole area is uh, is interesting. Anything else we uh, should be talking about? Uh, really appreciate your time. Now stay tuned. I, it's been a remarkable, I think, a remarkable ride on advanced imaging. I think as mentioned, there's a lot of different products coming out. I do think this will be a mainstay of evaluation very soon. I think it'll be rapidly uh, taken up by other centers. Um, and I think individual physicians have to find out from their center whether or not they'll make a gallium 68 or they'll go with a distribution model using something like PYL or, or similar agents. Yeah, one of the, uh, the, I just thought of something else is that I've seen a couple of patients uh, having difficulty localizing uh, where the cancer is in the prostate, uh, people being considered for focal therapy or things like that, where that the scan has actually identified the lesion very nicely in the prostate and uh, right. radical prostatectomy, that's where it was. So right. it's very interesting. Peter, thanks for uh, taking time to discuss this with our audience in Grand Rounds in Neurology. It's always a pleasure talking with you. David, thank you very much for the opportunity.